Hi and welcome to this very special live event here on Emmer TV. And I'm glad to say hello to Kevin Henderson, the COO of Pimax. How are you doing, Kevin? It's good to see you again. I'm happy to be here. So what is this show all about? Well, as the title of this live stream says it all, it is the Pimax 12K QLED unveiling we're going to see an actual yeah. device for the very first time this is a world yeah. premiere you agreed to to make this happen right you could have done this on your own on on the pimax channel what but you came here on the channel and uh, well, well you know you know that i'm asking the hard questions like, without mm, holding back so props for that yeah, and really my respect for I'm that because this is not any kind <laughs> of um, advertising event for your device this is the community wanting to yep. find out more about the device let me kind of like summarize it a bit and if you can always jump sure. in if you think i misunderstood something or whatever so in October last year, I believe it was, there was uh, an event, right. the Pimax Frontier event. And in, in that Correct. event, it was a live stream on the Pimax channel. You introduced the Pimax 12K QLED, which is your new flagship headset of a complete new exactly. platform of VR headsets that you are going to uh, launch in the future. And this platform is called the Reality Series. In, well, in that show, you you promised us the world. <laughs> I must say, it like this, it really <laughs> it really felt like, are you kidding me? This 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 Pimax sure. 12K QLED, this this new device, it honestly speaking, it sounded just too good to be true. Pimaxians, yeah. they they don't take compromises. They they don't need compromises right. because they get the very very best, which is they don't yeah. have to choose between standalone or PC VR because this headset right. can do both. It is it has it's like a standalone headset <laughs> with uh with a XR2 chipset like the, just like the Quest 2. But if you don't want the standalone mode, you can connect it to your computer and then it's a PC VR headset. But right. You don't only need it like with a wire. You can also have it wireless with Y gig, right? So you you simply Correct. get you get the best. And in terms yeah. of the FOV, like we know that Pimax is a huge wide FOV company, right? So it, right. the 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 FOV of the Pimax 8KX wasn't enough. Now you're even wider, right? Correct. Now it's like even wider, and no distortions at all anymore. Then the lenses. Get the new lens type, which is, you think you, you call them bionic lenses? It's a combination of a spheric lens in the middle and then like Fresnel lens. And a in, in, for, lens. For, for now, yeah, at the, right. uh, at the peripheral area. So you should get the best of both worlds. Then in terms of resolution, now you get um, 6K per eye. So you get this right. um, 12K air quotes resolution. And also for the panel, not only does it have like 12K, but also 200 Hertz. And then um, what else? What, what, what did I forget? So yeah, um, then- oh, no, it's, um, got, it's got Wi-Fi 6 uh, integrated, which is another thing. And the, it's got yeah. a QLED panel, which is new. It's got a dimming backlight, which is new. Yeah. Um, a battery operation, which is uh, new. Right, uh, right, right. It's so, got a new new speakers. It's got new right. audio processing on board, which is real cool. Three USBs yeah. that are powered. Right. Three microphones and uh, face tracking, eye tracking. Face tracking, eye tracking. Also in the in the video, it was like um, a talk about full body tracking module, like different kinds of yeah. modules. And that one also... I haven't I haven't seen the body tracking one. I've okay, seen, okay, the face. okay. And the new tracking technology. Is oh, yeah, another exactly. Thing, new know, tracking. It's, it's not about use base stations, right? You no know, yeah. base stations, inside out tracking. You have your own controllers. Oh, we have the new joystick controller. You have the new joystick cool. controllers. Exactly. It's like inside out tracking. So all right. these kinds of things, like just like after after the presentation. We just thought like, wow, it's like, wow, so much promise. It, Honestly right. speaking, it felt like, yeah, like over promising. And I'm one, I was wondering, don't you set up yourself <laughs> for like disappointment? Yeah, no, we, we actually struck things from the show because we, we felt like it was too much, you know. We didn't even get into all the features that it has. So, so even that, we felt it was over the top. You even like didn't put anything. No, you didn't put everything into that. Yeah, okay, and some good. of it we just simply saved to reveal later. Yeah, 
Right, right, right. So, yeah. Anyways, with this introduction, I simply wanted to. What's let cool you... is when you get to see and see and test these things. Right, you know? right. What's fun is uh, is seeing the evolution. You know, I've been doing this at Pimax for almost four years now, and I know seeing all these. You know, we have a lot of headsets, and uh, seeing all, seeing these evolve where they get a new version and another new one, and, and, it's, and it has more features, and that's been more true with the twelve K um than any other headset because it has real a lot of really new things and uh right so right it's quite impressive you know with the new le new lenses something we hadn't had in a long time right and, we're going to get uh, into you know, we're a going lot to of get things, into but... all of this we're going to get into all of this so yeah with this so little, where do you want to start with, yeah right right with this little interaction i just wanted to say obviously i'm a vr enthusiast and as a vr enthusiast i am excited but i also want to say on the other hand, there is this skepticism because sure. before in the Pimax history, there have been this kind of lofty promises and then Pimax didn't deliver or delivered sure. like, like way too late. So with this intro, I just wanted to yeah, let you and let the community know that, well, I am excited about this, but I will still treat this with lots of skepticism. And that's also what I got from the questions from the community, just to set this show sure. up right from the start, right? So that this is this is not any kind of advertisement um, event for the Pimax 12K QLED. This is really for the for the community to ask questions. And that's what I'm going to do. Record, we didn't prepare for this at all. This is all completely. Uh, I don't have any question. Nobody sent me anything. I'm just here. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, exactly. Just, that's 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 yeah. exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> that's 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 right. what we all appreciate. So let's start this. And come on, I know that the community wants to see the headset. So show it now. This is this is the 12K. There it is. Cool. So it is real. And <laughs> you can see the new lenses. Here it is, first and time. Then... Oh wow! Okay. Can and you do this again? Battery. <laughs> we are excited about the lenses. Like when will when will I be able to go hands on with the device? When 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 can I really look through it? I was thinking about inviting you here, you know, and maybe okay. you can do it here. So what can this device that is there in front of you, what can it do as compared to what you have promised in that frontier event? So sure. so can, can you well, use that first device of all, already? Let me give you a little let me give you a little qualifier. Mine does less than Martin's does. His is a newer one than mine. So he's got later revisions than I do. Uh, he's got, he's probably a month newer than mine is. So if I was to give you, what does it do right now? Six off tracking uh, based on the four camera system, the high speed system. Uh, it has the new lenses. It's got the QLED displays. It's got the new backlight, which is dimming. Um, it does wireless. Uh, so the it has wireless. The the wireless that works is the is the 60 gigahertz. The the 6e we're still working on, and uh, it doesn't work as good yet. Uh, this one has a uh, 128 gig, I think. So the Wagic module works well already, and you can play Steam VR games using this device in front of you. You can play Steam VR games uh, well perfectly. You can play them cabled. Okay. And uh, and then when you're when you're running YGIG, it works. But it, you know you can get a few, you can get some weird, well on mine you can get some weird sort of glitchy. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, but it's getting there. Every day okay. you get a better version. You know that's the cool thing about testing, is they say try this, and and sometimes when they say try this, it doesn't work at all, <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes they say try this and it's a big improvement. It's got fans. It's got these uh, active cooling system. Mm -hmm. uh, it has the, the dimming backlight. Uh, right now, the backlight in the one I have doesn't. It only. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, the full dimming capability is not in there yet. Um, Martin's has some dimming capability. They bet they have the QLEDs. The final panel is already in this headset. The final QLED panel. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's it's either final or close to final. The audio. The audio is better than ever. It's got a slightly new version of the um, of the of the DMAS, and it, and what's cool is it uses the XR2 um, to do the audio processing for the first time. We have onboard audio processing. The audio is night and day. It's really impressive. So, 
It uh, there's no tweaking. You don't, you don't have to touch it. This one has a 6,000 mAh battery. Whether or not we can increase that to a higher value by the time it releases, we don't know. Um, it's a hot swappable battery, right? Oh, and you'll get to see our base station. Okay. So basically, if you were to just think, people that talk about the, you know, the 12K is I mean, like you were saying, like man, we, uh, you, you know, this thing is so difficult or such a high bar to set. Uh, I I don't know if I really agree with that, and and the, and the reason is, I mean, if you look at each, it's not that any individual feature is some ridiculously high bar. How about what problems sure. does Pimax 12K still have that have to be um, solved before the launch? The Wi-Fi. Okay. The six, the Wi-Fi six is the main thing. Uh, um, getting the getting the 60 gigahertz smooth is another thing, and one of the things we're evolving right now is what you get, what you can see in the standalone mode. And you know exactly that's super interesting. Stand, yeah. Yeah. So when you move to standalone mode on on these new headsets you know it it's a lower fov and a and a lower refresh rate and lower resolution so you know it reduces the amount of data that the xr2 has to um deal with now our xr2 is a lot higher clock than uh, because we have active cooling it is uh it runs much higher bandwidth than like a quest it's actually uh dramatically faster processing than existing xr2s okay it's a high and in, clock. in that in that moment and, i must uh, ask the question how loud is the active cooling because i have some active cool headsets and i don't enjoy them because the fan is so loud right. it's like a low hum right now you can hear it it's much quieter than the focus 3. okay i have a focus 3. yeah me too and uh, i'd say it's half the volume of that when you're using a real on the standalone it's much quieter than it is in, when you're connected to Steam VR PC. Okay, Kevin, what are we looking at here? Yeah. What what is that? Uh, so you see the joystick controllers there. Uh, you see the 12K. You can see the the Y gig adapter on it. Uh, you also see the battery assembly. Um, I have a second prototype Y gig adapter laying there, and then the base station. Um, you know, and the the base station is our new uh, Pimax base station that you that you can uh, that you plug into the PC. Uh, remember, sixty gigahertz is line of sight, so that has to be uh, it has to be in line of sight with your where your headset is. Um, but um, so you have the battery, the joystick controllers. Uh, one thing it shows is the joystick controllers are clear. You can see a clear. Um, but in the real, in the final versions, it won't be like that. It'll it'll be opaque. When we're testing, we don't use the special paint or the you know the special covering. But uh, yeah, uh, and then on that one, like I say, it's got both 6E and the 60 gigahertz installed. But you know that just pops out. It's a, and okay. then it has a magnet. You can see where it's connected by a magnet on the so, top. So here, this part right. here, this is there's a it's magnet. Got a magnet here. inside the. Yeah, inside the cable, right? Okay, and and here this right is here. this is a USB C connector, right? Correct. No, well, uh, no, that's a oh, that's no. actually a uh, kind of a proprietary connector okay. for the for the Y gig. Um, right. Um, it's it uses the it uses the physical USB C uh, connector, but the actual protocol right now is different. Yeah. Let's next. Um, let's talk about the battery. So sure. It's um, six thousand milliampere hours. You mentioned right. it, and um, yeah, it's hot swappable. That's what I personally find is interesting. So, so does this mean that somewhere in in the headset there is a secondary battery to make this happen, like some small battery, so that just it won't right? It works lose just it. like this. The sword controllers do. The sword controllers for the hot swapping. Okay. Even if you would use it in the cable version, you would still need to have the battery inside the device? In the version I have, yes. How much time do you have to hot swap? In, this, in, this, in the samples, you have about 30 seconds. How heavy is the, the device with, the, with that battery? This one is about it? the same weight as, the, as an 8KX. 
the the base bundle that we've been talking about will get will come with the joysticks, battery, charger, uh, headset. You'll get the you'll get the DMAS, essentially the DMAS 2.0, which is the new DMAS. These are optical tracked control optically tracked controllers. Uh, so you know, so the headset is doing most of the tracking of the controllers. So you know, they put out infrared infrared uh, LEDs in the in the controllers. Uh, as a result of that, they let the batteries in the controllers last a very long time. Mm. Uh, so yeah, these. basically uh, very similar to what we see with the Quest, because it's, it's the same yeah, technology. These, the batteries in these things can last. You know, I, I I have never even charged mine. I mean, it's been let's put it that way. It's been a while. You okay. know, it, it uh, charged it. I charged it a month ago. You know, right. <laughs> so, um, so is it the same like with the Quest controllers that um, you put in batteries, or would you charge them? Because we don't see a port here on this picture. Um, yeah, it, it the battery it, that whole side slide it works just like the sword controller does, where the slide side slides off and you put the battery in. Okay, so here we see a bit more. Yeah, very familiar setup, yep. right? So yep. here, joystick controller. We see it here for the first time. That's cool. Yeah. Exactly. Does it have any kind of capacitive touch, like the like the Oculus Touch has, or is there any kind of finger tracking? That's to be determined. Um, the the Sora controllers do have the electronics in them for that. Um, whether or not it'll make it into this. I don't know. Tell us a bit more about um, this part here. What is it for? Is it just for some accessories or some kind of um, strap to make them connect to yeah, your you hands? Can, or Yeah, you can connect it to your wrist with that. You've okay. got a little strap that goes on there. You can put your hands through the strap or you can use that to connect it to your wrist. So is this here the, the area? That entire piece comes off. Okay. Correct. So if you want if you want lighthouse tracking if you want to use your valve index controllers Correct. you would have you would have to purchase the lighthouse module it's a faceplate right and that whole faceplate comes off so you can uh, pull that off and put lighthouse tracking in i'm just wondering when you come out with this will the lighthouse yeah. module be ready i don't know the, the the team I I don't have one, but the team keeps telling me that it's laughably simple. It, would it be correct if I say that for the Pimax 12K, your priority will be the inside out tracking, and this what we right. see here right now? Yes. Of course, we are. Yeah, we are wondering about the the tracking capability because we have seen other devices with inside out tracking other than Meta, and they did not track so well. It's uh. It's some of the best tracking I've seen for this kind of tracking. What is the target product launch window? When you told us about the device last year, you said it would be Q4 2022. Are we still yeah. hot with, with Q, Q4 2022? And when will people be able to pre-order this? Is there going to be some kind of pre-order mechanism or how are you going to sell that? Well, we have the trade-in program. Whenever you spend any bug on any Pimax headset, it is going to be put against the price of the of the Pimax 12K QLED. Is that correct? Please confirm again. Right. Yeah, any headset, any Pimax headset. <laughs> yeah, okay, but so, but what if I have no, no other brands? All right, okay, uh, yeah, obviously, but. Um, there's no having right. to send it back. I don't have to physically still have that. I, could, I have already sold it. Let's say I've already sold my 8KX, but I still have... No, you have to... It's a trade-in program. Oh, okay. That's to important to understand. Headset. You yes. have to send the handset... Yeah, that makes sense. So you have to send the headset back into you, back to you. That's what if the device is broken? It's it's not working anymore. Yeah, we, the, we check it. No, no. We, we check the device when we get it. It has to be a working device in reasonable condition. And you have to have a receipt. What, what if I bought it secondhand from a friend? I didn't get it from Amazon. I didn't get it. I don't have the receipt. I just have the device. What to do? You have to have bought it from... If you bought it from a friend, you would need to have bought it from eBay where you have a receipt from somewhere we've heard of. We're not going to accept receipts from uh, good buddy Bob who writes a receipt for you and says it's 
two thousand dollars or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't accept handwritten receipts or receipts from non from just between friends. It's got to be. I'll give you a little insight into the motivation, if that's of any use. Yeah, of course. Um, number one, we want to have things for Pimax customers that make it worthy of having a Pimax for uh, moving into the future. You know that if you have one, we'll, we'll offer you something to, you know, to move up to the next device, number one. But number two is, this, this is the key. This, this new line of devices we call the Reality 3 um, has a standalone capability. And for the standalone capability to be worthy of developers to develop for, we got to get a, a high, a good population of them out there. So if we released the 12K and didn't have a way to increase those numbers um, early on, uh, it would make it a lot viable for developers to, to start developing. So this was also a means to get a nice software platform with a good population of software for people and a, and a, and nice prospects for the developer community that's writing for, for this. So in Q4, when we release the, the 12K, uh, we want to have, you know, it needs to be sexy and, and good for, for the developer community so they can, they can sell their software and make money. So there has to be enough headsets out there to do that. So we have a, a lot of plans on how to do that and get, get the population high. Okay. You know. how, so how does the, the process of, of making this um, upgrade really work? So there will be this website and let's say I, I want the I want the um, 12K QLED and I did buy an 8KX. Do I first have to pay the full yeah. price of the 12K QLED no. first? Nope. Nope. Okay, so, really so how is it going to work out? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you'll merely, there will be no money involved when it gets to where we actually have a unit for you and the, and the unit is manufactured. Then we send you an email and you pay. Okay. And that's when the trade-in process happens. Yeah. They want to know there about um, who's going to sit, who's going to uh, right. pay for, for the shipping. Is it going to be like, okay, you will give them some kind of um, code and then they just pop it onto the package and go to the post office or they have to pay it first, the shipping? It'll calculate the shipping when it, when you go to the website to do the trade-in, you'll pay, the customer pays the shipping and it'll figure okay. that out when you do the, uh, when you do the cart, when you get the email. So here, okay. however, so the there is good news uh, yeah. when it comes to the shipping. And that is because we have the depots this time and we okay. have regional depots. Right. We have depots. We have two in the United States. We got some in Europe. We have uh, one in the UK. We got uh, one in France. We got one in Poland. We got we got depots now. So you don't have to ship to China. You only have to ship locally to your region. Next question is: Are there going to be cheaper 12K units? Because you said like this is a this is a whole new platform, right? It's the Pimax Reality platform, and it's I a did series. receive. It's the reality it's series. series it's, a, the P3 it's the reality series, exactly. Series. So, so lots of people are right. actually so what the, um, so yeah, excited about. Call, it. So, for example, um, we used to the the AKX and before all the way to the 5K plus is the P internally is the P2 series. So they call them the P2. Uh, this is the P3, and uh, so the P3 platform is going to have multiple headsets. <laughs> And multiple headsets this year. The 12K QLED, and yes. well, the flagship it's means the it's the most, ex it's the king, it's the most expensive one. So most probably that right. means cheaper versions of this are on are are coming up. But there will be more than cannot... there will be uh, more than one more than one headset, and they'll they'll have the features that they have will be commensurate, you know, with the price. So. You can yeah. imagine that the uh, that for the most part the, the features will be some subset of the 12K. Some people report that they have problems looking through Pimax lenses. They say, okay, they develop some eye strain after a while, and they they feel there's a problem with the binocular overlap. And for some people, actually, it's yep. impossible to use a Pimax headset. There's still a big difference between like putting on a meta quest or some other headset where they don't have any problems right. but for pimax headsets they say okay something is off something is off right. with the optics Let's talk so, about that. so did Let's you talk about did that you, a little bit okay did you solve that problem with so the number pimax one 12Q the overlap well 
there's multiple things about it. Number one, on the on a Pimax AKX, the overlap is 86 degrees. Um, you know, on a, for example, on most headsets, it's, it's around high 80s, 90 degrees at the, at the most is usually the overlap. This has 118 degrees overlap. It's so mm -hmm. it's a it has a massive overlap compared to so it that right there makes it very friendly on your eyes, and you can really tell. So that's number one. Number two, the Toby eye tracking adjusts the your IPD automatically. It actually analyzes it when and you, you press the button on top, hold it down, and it'll it'll set the IPD. So you have an IPD analysis. Uh, when you when you put it on, so it it's, it doesn't have this manual dial like the AKX has, where you where you move the dial around and try to find the sweet spot for you. It it finds the sweet spot for you. Uh, and the cool thing is, another person can put it on, hold down the button, and it'll adjust for them. It's real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so you have that. Uh, it has a wider range of IPDs that it can work with as well. So you have uh, we it's, it can go smaller and bigger than the AKX. So it, it's about 15% smaller and bigger on both ends. So you have a wider range of people that can use it. It goes down to 55, uh, IPD of 55 on the small end. And me, I'm 58 uh, and it works great for me. So uh, I can get it real clear and it, it does adjust automatically. And the overlap, the, the very large overlap that it has makes it so natural because it's almost, it, you know, the, the we're talking about an overlap that's like 35% wider than your average headset has. This um, is spheric part and the Fresnel part. I got lots of questions asking, can you see mm -hmm. that part going from a spheric to Fresnel? Is, there, is it like a visible frontier, basically, that you can see? Um, how is it? If, it's like looking for the Fresnel uh, in the Pimax now. You know, you can see it, but only if you're, if you really, I have a hard time seeing, you know, seeing the bands when I'm looking, when I'm looking, but is it impossible? No. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can see it just like you can see Fresnel in any other headset. Well, um, you proclaim that distortions are gone. <laughs> can you, would you stand by that? And would, would you stand by that for, for the largest FOV? Because that, that is, in my opinion, still a problem of the 8KX, for example. I do agree that it's way better. And that's you know what, what I said in my last video. Is, yep. For me, the difference is the edges on this are so much for, are so they're further out into the, <laughs> so the further away from the center it is, the harder it is to even see, and you know, and uh, so it's difficult to even see the ed the edges so far back. But um, so it's hard to say if what you're seeing is, uh, you know. But if you but if you just look forward and then you look one way or the other directly, uh, you know, at, try to look at the edge. It's hard to see the edge on this thing, even when you rotate your eyes and you look, you know, one way or another. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and but um, the uh, that that's where Toby comes in, you know. And Toby, with their optimization for the lens and the and the uh, dynamic distortion profile that they have, and we've been working one with them, um, in a partnership. Uh, that's what that's all about. So um, that whole partnership revolves around uh, the lenses and the distortion profiles and, and that aspect of it. But again, it is so, it, you know, it's, it's wider. So, you know, those edges are not even in your view <laughs> at okay. all. So I suppose this headset does not have eye relief, as in being able to put the lenses further away from mine, your eyes if you, if you wear glasses? Mine or? does not, but, uh, but that is something we want to that we're going to add i think before it was released oh really wow that would be big so i relief um confirmed okay that, that is such an important uh, piece of information that that it's so easy to change because like um yeah for the g2 because the first um face gasket was not made for everyone people were too far away from the lenses and then they had problems with you know sweet spot and stuff so it's important to think yeah. about that that not that all the faces are different right so that's that a good thing that sweet that spot is something that you think about is sweet spot is no problem sweet spot with on this one, is right? not a problem 
This has the biggest sweet spot of any headset ever made. Mm -hmm. Easy. <laughs> I like it. Okay. So. And how about how about the the edge to edge clarity? <laughs> if people if you use your eyes to look like to the left and the right, is it like everything is still clear or is it degrading towards the edges? Probably it is because for Nell, normally you have these problems, right? Like I say, like I was saying before, the edges are so far away. Yeah, okay. That uh, they're they're so far in the they're mu they're further than they are in the on the AK, you know. So, so they're significantly distant. But okay. um, that said, uh, you know, we're working with Toby on edge to edge clarity, and uh, it's got an improved lens design. We've been improving for five years the distortion profiles and gotten good at it. Now we have mm -hmm. better hardware to work with. Uh, on both the lenses, on the data we get from the eye tracking, every headset that we make with the on the 12K it has eye tracking in real time distortion correction based on that. So that's something we didn't have with the AKX. We had to make generic profiles. Now we don't. They're they're dynamic profiles. Okay, so dynamic so, um, distortion correction based on eye tracking, confirmed. Right. Will the panels sure. support? Um, high dynamic range. It does. It uses an algorithm to to calculate at HDR. So it's, it's an algorithm that we've been partner on. Okay, cool. So you enable that in the driver. Okay. So with that resolution, with that resolution, what kind of hertz will you get? It's not going to be two hundred, I guess. Correct. Correct. So at the widest field of view. With the highest resolution, it's not 200 hertz, and it probably how much is be... it? What I care about would be like the high resolution with a good FOV at 90 hertz at least. Is that something that you can achieve? Like the the like oh, getting yeah. close to the native no, resolution it can do 90. and uh... yeah, it, it okay. is full. Okay, right, good. And it, it, that's all you can do. Yeah, no, that's all fine. Okay. Of course, now we want to know, wow, this crazy res resolution in our standard right now, like 6K per eye, and uh, you're trying to get more and more um, hertz through the cable. What kind of cable is it? <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of connection do you need on the GPU? Is it something like uh, DisplayPort 2.0? Is it um, two yeah, DisplayPorts 1.4? This, this sample uses DisplayPort 1.4s. Okay, so what so, do you think will the final one have? <laughs> that, that's what interests us. I'm I'm told that we do you know that we do have some single cable solution versions. Um, that's the uh, the in, the actual interface is something that's evolving. How about how about motion reprojection? Is it something that's that's going to be there on day one? Yes. How good does the picture look like? You know, like in my opinion right now, the king of clarity is the Vario Aero. Super nice um, visuals. You've probably also right. looked through it. And Love really, really, really impressive, really fan. impressive headset. Yeah, me too. So how would you compare the clarity of the Pimax 12K QLED to that of the, Two, by the, way. Of the Aero? I, I would say it's on par with that. Can you tell us the difference between foveated transport and um, foveated rendering? Foveated transport reduces the actual data that sent that is sent. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a way of reducing data across the cable or across mm -hmm. wireless. And it makes it now, and DFR changes the rendering profile. What would be the difference between foveated transport? Uh, is it comparable to display stream compression? Why is the, the foveation important? Well, that's that? another technique. You have, yeah, you exactly. have DSC, you have foveated transport, you have DFR, which is spotlight, and, and you have actually numerous other techniques too. And then that's before you even get into the software side on your PC uh, yeah. and with the techniques. So, so you have two modes of wireless. One is um, Wi-Fi 6E, right? And the other one is Y-Gig. Um, c could you shortly explain to us right. um, when when Wi-Fi is used and when Y gig is used? You know, Wi-Fi six E is um, is not sufficient to run the, a headset like this at the full resolution and the full FOV and the full refresh rates. It's, you know, it's it, it, you have to cut it down very significantly yeah. to run on six E. Okay. Uh, and if you want to get anywhere near what the headset can do, you have to run Y gig. Okay. We we actually I would mention that we actually have two uh, adapters and testing. 
One of those is actually not a Y gig. One of them is, and one of them is a wireless HD. And mm -hmm. which one will actually release, uh, or or release both? Unknown. So for the for the Wi-Fi for the Wi-Fi six E for the um, for the kind of streaming. Are you building your your own streaming software, or are you working together with virtual desktop uh, Gigodin, or um, how how is it how do you, how, how do you work on that? Um, we're building that. Okay. We're building that. That's we have our own apps, some of our own apps for it, and we have third parties too. And uh, we okay. hope to have things like virtual desktop and all kinds of things like that. Right, right. You are know? you already in in touch with Gigodin from virtual desktop? We want. That's a good that. question. Uh, <laughs> not me personally, but I don't know. I don't know everyone who's. I know that we have hundreds of of uh, developers that we are are in contact with. I don't know if he's one of them. He should be a priority, in my opinion, and the community for um, sure. Also, things like that. And what kind of software is going to be used? Is it going to be the same Pi Tool software, or is it going to be the Pimax experience that I recently tried out and that I actually liked? Our intention is to, to develop. We have been developing new software. You're going to see the new Pimax software for the even for the old headsets. It has the PC VR store too. Yeah. Okay. So it has two. It has both. Right. So, so that and, means uh, that you will you will get into competition with with Steam. You will have your whole platform for PC VR as well. Right. What's going to happen is uh, in the next little bit, there's going to emails will start going out to people who for uh, for testing of that of the new software. So, yeah, that's what's going to happen. And in the standalone mode, how easy is it going to be for developers to to port their Quest 2 games? to that new headset. I'm sure that this will be like very that's important, a big, right? That's a key element. You know, that's we've been making element. it as easy as possible. Um, we, we've actually, uh, a key focus was to make it as simple and as seamless as possible to, to, uh, to release things intended for Quest, intended for other platforms that are standalone for Pine Mac. And uh, to make this possible, and uh, the the team has been a big focus of them is to get it to where it's a painless process. So in the standalone mode, what kind of refresh rate are we getting, and what kind of um, resolution, and what kind of FOV? Like you, you, we, I turn it on for the first time in standalone mode. What do I see? Uh, well, it'll have a it has a menu, a set of menus that, that you, where you can launch things from. It's a launcher essentially. Mm -hmm. And um, it, you can change the settings, and and you have a launcher, and then the launcher will install. It's a kind of Questish launcher, um, and uh, you can purchase things from in there, and you can do. And there are a lot of free stuff, and uh, and uh, you can do firmware updates and 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 things like that from in the menus when you boot it up, and then you can launch direct. Use the controllers; you can launch directly. So okay. right now you you manually control the FOV and the uh, refresh rate and those things inside the settings menu, and uh, but in the future we'll probably have it where the apps can can define that based on how complex the app is. So if you so if you play something complex, it'll set the appropriate automatically set the appropriate FOV and refresh and all of the all of those yeah. settings. Yeah, but but what are you but targeting? To answer, like, your, what, to answer your question is yep. what, what is it? And then my answer is it's different based on what you run. So if you, when you run something really simple, you can go wider. Yeah. And, and the more complex it is, the smaller you have to make it, and the lower the refresh you have to make it, the lower resolution you have to make it. So yeah, let's talk about let's say okay for um, simple like, things like, for yeah. for a for a Beat Saber uh, sort of thing for for example that kind of thing. Uh, you can you you can run it at like 150 degrees at 90 hertz. Yeah, and seven. the resolution is 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 um, it's 2.5k per eye or 4k per eye. Is the Pimax computer thing still still uh, something that you uh, want to do? Yeah, that's what that, that the wireless adapter can also have the graphics processing capability in it. Wait, wait, and this thing here that the Dyson. Thing. This is actually the computer. 
it, it there's a version one of the versions we're working on of that is that yeah oh really wow that that is yeah. that is news <laughs> that is actually really that is a new piece of information so is actually this what i'm showing right now this thing is the pimax box it's both but we'll probably <laughs> sell it at first that is cool. just with, with with just the wireless capability because it's so, different um, electronics that go in it for the different versions so we we do have some feedback now from the german stream and um, yeah. Yeah, the German stream doesn't believe it. <laughs> the thing is, that box, what can it do? Like, the, the question is, what, what is it able to do? So you don't need a computer anymore to run PC VR games. This is a PC, this is a, this is a PC basically inside that will play PC VR games, or what is it? I think Steam Deck. It's roughly, it's roughly the power of a Steam Deck. If, if you're asking, do we include a, like a 3090 in the, uh, as part of this thing? No. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, it's going to have decent processing power in it um, that uh, that will allow the gaming capability with no PC above and beyond what you can do uh, with the capabilities in the headset on the standalone so, mode. You'll be able to do essentially the same things, but with higher refresh rates, higher field of view, and so on. Okay, so this is not about playing Steam VR games. So this is about playing your mobile games, but streaming streaming them from this device. G give us a, a ballpark number in terms of how expensive this could be. No, but it, hundreds it, it, or it's, it's yeah. I mean, it'll be uh, in a in a like a console type price. Console price is like four hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Something like that computer version of it uh, will be after the headset's released. How about hand tracking? Is it supported? Hand tracking is supported. It, and uh, they, the hand tracking that they're working on uses the cameras in the headset. Okay, yeah, that, that's perfect. That's better. So you don't need to add some additional module. Right. Okay, so the body tracking thing is really, is really, is real. <laughs> it's going to be a thing. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a partner company similar to Toby and okay, similar to some, uh, Qualcomm and some of our other partners. Right, right, but but it, and uh, it's something what, that's already. What would it support? Would it be um, compatible with VR chat out of the box, for example? That's probably something that people will want to use it for. Yeah, you need you need a certain level of functionality with it when you release it. Let's put it that way. And yeah, that would be so you don't first. have that right now. That would yeah, be okay. that would be my first. Uh, <laughs> wish to see it operating in. Is and, Lighthouse uh, faceplate would... available on day one? Is that something that you I can hope, say I, now? I hope it's available on on or around day one. Our intention is to get it out right around that time. They definitely don't want that to have a high price. So it's going to be low. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Really appreciate yeah. it. And uh, let's thank do you. it again. Exactly. Thank you so much. So, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about this show. That was a really cool show. That was a cool show. Hope you enjoyed it as well. Bye-bye.